Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brave for Kian. Welcome to our live video series. Had a little technical issue, so I'm a couple seconds late. Uh, hey, my commenters already noticed. This is my fifth year here. This is my anniversary, anniversary of being at Brave for Kia for five years. And what do we get to do? We do what I kind of am known for, introducing new cars. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, what we're gonna do in this video is, if you've never watched this before, we're gonna take a look at two Kia K5s. We're gonna compare the GT line, which is this new uh, gray color. We'll talk about that. And we're gonna compare it to the EX over there. So uh, what we don't really do on a live video is we let our live audience build for the first three minutes. So if you're not watching with us live, you can skip ahead to the, uh, the three minute mark and that'll be where we get into the content of the video. In the meantime, if you wanna join us live, we do this every weekday, live at two o'clock, uh, two o'clock Eastern time. And you're welcome to join us. You can ask your questions. You can get uh, some of them answered. And if you don't have an answer to your question, then hopefully I'll be able to find out in a future video because, like I said, we do this daily. So let me show you how to join us. Just skip over here. And all right. Go over to my computer. We are on the wrong page, and that's fine. There's the nice-looking K5. We're going to talk all about that today. Head over to YouTube to join us live. And uh, just search in YouTube for Brantford Kia. It's the quickest way to find us. Uh, you can see what we look like right there. If you refresh the page exactly at 2 o'clock, we're a minute late today just because I had a little technical issue. And you will see right here on our home screen the live video. It has a little red live tab. If for whatever reason you don't see it there and it is a weekday, click this little videos tab right there and it'll be the very first uh, video there. So we're going to click into that. We're going to watch an ad for Monday.com. Definitely you should buy Monday.com. Okay, we're going to skip that ad for you. All right, that just cost my dealership some money, just so you know, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let me just give you a real quick recap. Yesterday, we had a complete failure, failure on my part, really. Uh, I pulled a vehicle in here with a 12-volt battery that was not charged, and I couldn't do the video, and it threw me, and that kind of throws me off when I, uh, you know, I couldn't finish my video properly, so didn't even put it on the playlist, but it's still up online for your viewing enjoyment. You can watch me stumble and bumble and... For anybody who has, uh, sometimes we do uh, things at the dealership where we tell other people how to do what we do or what we do. Um, I left that video up there because, hey, sometimes we fail. Things happen. It is what it is. Uh, there we go. Hey, somebody wrote free pizza down there. Funny thing is, I was just talking to head office. Shout out to JP, who is definitely not watching. He told me he watches every video. He told me he watches most videos. He's, he's changed his story many times. But JP from head office, so I was just talking to him. He said he's going to bring pizza to us this month. So it's now on video for the world to see. I, every time I talk to him from head office, I tell him he owes us pizza. Because what they used to do is bring food every now and then. But now, of course, with COVID, we don't see them as much. It is what it is. All right, real quick, before we get started, if you want to follow along what we do here, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm not really too concerned whether you follow me or not. Uh, but if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you can just go to at Peter underscore Brantford underscore Kia. Again, so following me on Instagram, all it does is let you see what's coming up. I try to get these uh, pictures up on Instagram before we do the video. Sometimes I'm a little tight for time and I make it right before the video, uh, but I'll do better. And in my story every morning, I talk about what I'm doing and I also talk about what we're doing today. So you can follow me on Instagram and you can ask your questions, especially if you can't join us live. You can ask your questions on Instagram. Uh, then what I can do is answer them on the YouTube video and you can watch them again later that night. So it's just something to keep an eye on what we're doing. You can suggest things, all kinds of things. It's just something, another fun way to connect with us. Uh, so what we're doing today is the Kia K5 GT line just showed up today. I put about 30, 40 kilometers on that car today. So I've driven that. I've driven that car for 30 or 40 kilometers. We've had it for a week. I've dug through it. Uh, going into today, I kind of figured that would be the car I would buy for myself. I figured there was nothing more I needed. And then I met this car. And now I'm not sure because there's a lot of things I like about this car. So we're going to talk about what's new and what's going on. Uh, looks like it wasn't PDI'd inside. Yes, no, there is still plastic in that car, which I meant to peel off. But like I said, sometimes we've run a little short on time. We had some meetings today and other things. Uh, I did run it through the car wash for you guys. So I want to talk real quickly about what you're getting on the GT line. Just so you know, if you're just joining us, uh, we spend about a half an hour going through content on these cars. I know that seems like a long time, but we move through pretty quickly. You can ask your questions throughout. Uh, about the 20 minute mark, I usually end up taking some questions. And then at the 30 minute mark, we're willing to go a little off topic. So if you have an off topic question, that's where things go. So buckle up for the next 25 minutes, uh, grab a beverage, grab a snack. Uh, let's have some fun. Let's talk about this car and we'll help you decide which one you might like better for you. All right, here's the super secret. Uh, can't show you the documents. Price is under embargo until September 2nd, all this stuff. Uh, we're gonna talk about what's actually different on this car. So I'm gonna just put this down on the table so I can hold the thing steady. 
We have an auto child lock with safe exit assist. What that means, we'll talk about that later. We used to have a warning, now we have an assist. We'll talk about that. And if I don't bring any of these things up, feel free to let me know. 18-inch alloy wheels are black. So basically the same size wheels, but different coloring. Uh, gloss black mirror housing. They're actually power mirrors now. Different type sport radiator grill, yada, yada, yada. So it's different bumpers, um, uh, power folding outside mirrors. And then over here, pass power passenger seat, memory driver seats, ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, which I'm going to show you a super secret function that nobody has d seen before on our Kia vehicles. It's a pretty cool function on there. Uh, sports leather steering wheel, metal pedals, which are still covered in plastic. The big screen, that's a big thing for me because that big screen with navigation also has entirely new software, which I'm still learning. Um, I went through today and realized there's a whole bunch of things I've got to learn on it. So we'll talk about that. Uh, Android Auto and Apple uh, CarPlay, it says wired. We're going to talk about that because it's not necessarily wired. Highway driving assist, uh, good little home link mirror, and power windows with auto up, down, and safety, yada, yada, yada. We'll talk about what that means. So that's all we have for specs. What's really good about these videos is we can show you what that means, what's different on the bumpers, what's different inside, software differences, things that are the same that you may not expect to the same. And I think that's the thing for me. I kind of felt like looking at the spec sheet, this car and that car, it wouldn't be worth it to move to this car for me for the money. They have the same engine, same transmission. There is a GT, and just so we're clear, this is the GT line in Canada. This is the third model from the bottom. So we got LX, EX, which is here, GT line, which is here. All of them share the same engine and transmission. And then there's a GT at the top of the line. The GT is a different engine, a uh, different transmission, and some different options. It is essentially a different car. Everything I've shown you here, there, and the LX, which we don't have yet in stock, uh, those are all all-wheel drive models. The GT is a front-wheel drive only model. We'll talk about that when it gets here. So what we're comparing is the middle and top of the line of the all-wheel drive segments in Canada. ETA on the GT in Canada, well, somebody on my Instagram account sent me a picture of the GT in Mississauga. Uh, so that pretty much guarantees head office has one right now. Uh, I don't have official timing, but I would expect it next month in December, uh, around Christmas time in that area. Of course, as soon as we get one, we really put a lot of pressure on head office to get that car. So it'll be here um, and when, as soon as we can get it and we'll have it in the video bay. We'll do our whole thing with it. So it is coming and it is not that far away. Okay, so here's the thing. Like I mentioned, I kind of figured I'd buy this car. Now I kind of want this car. Why is that? They're so similar. What are we really talking about? Well, let's just refresh our memory with the grill of this car here. Looks super sharp. From the grill on up, these are identical cars. They've got the nice looking, you know, it doesn't show as much as well on video as it does in real life, but it's a really aggressive looking front grill. From the grill down, you have a little different area. So this area here and this area here is different on the GT line. Now there's no fog lights in either one, but you can see a little bit more of an aggressive look right here. So, oh, my regulars are also telling you to smash that like button. Uh, they are just saving me the hassle of, hey, I do these for free for you. Only my boss pays for them. The only thing I ask in return is you hit the like button and if I can earn your subscription to our channel, if you want to do that as well, I would really appreciate it. It's not hard to hit. You can ignore the notifications if you want. I won't force you to hit the bell no notification. But yeah, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Do me a favor. So you can see here, a little bit more aggressive grill. A lot bigger intake sort of on the side there or intake looking thing. It is sub-functional. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, down here, smart cruise control. Um, that's what that plate there is for. It also helps with uh, collision avoidance. You still have that on the EX as well. As you can see right here, that's radar plate right there. So uh, kind of a similar look out front, definitely a little bit more aggressive in the front here uh, than that one over there. And you can just sort of see that one's got a couple of little silver. I don't know if you can see them really well. Let's just take a closer look. In this piano black detail down here, you do have a little bit of a silver piece on each one of these, whereas you're fully piano black on this one here. So a little bit more aggressive grill. Um, for me, that alone would not be enough reason to switch to this car. The wheels, let's see if I can get them both in the shot. All right, wheels, do they look the same to you guys? They should, they are identical. So here's the difference. This one here, this is black in the middle. That one there, that's gray in the middle. It is a uh, dark gray on that wheel, uh, black on this wheel. Does it look sportier? Probably, um, neither one looks better. You could swap them around for me and I wouldn't, uh, Again, not enough reason for me to buy one over the other. Moving up here, black mirrors compared to body color mirrors over there. 
Now these ones are power fold. So when I lock the car, it will power fold in. A lot of you have been asking about that function. They moved it away on something like the Kia Soul. You can't get it all in the Kia Soul anymore, but they still have it on the K5 here. Uh, the other thing we should point out is the color. Oh, the color name just slipped my mind for two seconds. I just had it in my head. I'm going to say ghost gray, but that's this old stinger gray. Uh, oh, man. Wolf gray. Wolf gray. Sorry about that. This is a brand new color, and if you like this color, it is only available on the GT line. Now, we had a ghost gray stinger, and this is a wolf gray um, K5. Is it the same color? I haven't checked the paint code yet. Um, I would assume it's a different color, but now I'm kind of wondering. I didn't love the Stinger in the Ghost Gray. I quite like this car in the Wolf Gray. It's just uh, in an interesting color. Colors never show up perfectly on camera. I can see right now in the screen that I'm looking at, uh, neither one of these cars are exactly the same color in the screen I'm looking at, which means when you're seeing it on your screens, it's also gonna be different. Coming back here, let's take a look at the back. We also have a different rear bumper here. Uh, the rear end of this car, I quite like the differences, and you'll see them here for yourself. Um, let's start at the very top. Maybe we'll go to this side here, and we'll sort of see what we can show you. All right, so we have this kind of unique, uh, like I said, sort of piano black trim here. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. You can see this is a single panel here. you have got a double panel, a little bit more aggressive look there, uh, and I'm kind of a fan of them. I, they're not functional vents or anything, but you've got that there. You can still see on the blue, there's a little bit of an indent here. Whereas on this one, you have a full two panel, like this is a separate, you know, this is a different look altogether. This does look more aggressive to me. It, it just looks better. Um, over here on the exhaust type, fake exhaust, because there's actually the real exhaust underneath there. You see it there on the very top of your screen? So that's a fake exhaust. You have a little splitter in there. Whereas over here, you do not. Does it make a difference? No, but it's the little details in here that make the car look sportier. That one from the rear end definitely looks sportier. Down here as well, you have a diffuser, which is this sort of, those teeth kind of coming out of the bumper there, but it's a piano black. It's a little harder to see. Still looks kind of aggressive. This one stands out more because it is more silver color and it looks, uh, it's metallic type color look and it looks more aggressive. Rear end on the car looks Sportier. The other thing that they do, you've got body color through the license plate area over here, whereas you've got piano black through the license plate area over there. So a little bit different uh, in that area there, sort of lowers the car, I guess, kind of makes it look lower. And the piece that I think kind of sets off the car nicely, there's this little lip spoiler here. And again, it's not something you see right from the start, but it does set the car off, make it look a little sportier. Um, this car has some sort of a lip spoiler built into the metal, so does that one. But that little black lip spoiler in real life goes, hey, this car looks pretty good. So there's your exterior differences. One thing you may be surprised about is that panoramic roof in both cars. They both have panoramic sunroof, so uh, both look really sharp that way. Again, not something everybody's going to go for. So you're not buying this car probably for just the looks. Um, that's one thing that uh, you can see that sets them apart. But the average person, not the Kia nerds like me, are going to look at these two cars and go, yeah, they're basically the same. You know, there's not a whole lot of difference. So now let's take a look inside. Let's jump in the EX for quick and real first. Uh, door sills, are they different? Oh, I don't think they are, but let me just check. No, I'm going to say no. Bottom of the doors. Uh, oh, maybe. Oh, I think they're not. But no, they're not. They're the same. Yeah, they're the same. Okay, good question. I, for a second, I thought you got me there. I thought maybe they were. All right, let's take a look inside again. Keep in mind, we just got this car. I haven't gone through everything. Uh, and I do want to um, say that some of the plastic is still on this car. I've done my best to peel what I can. Uh, but I did run out of time to dump that. I wanted to be on time for you guys. So passenger seat still has a lot of plastic in here. You'll see some of that. Ignore some of that. And let's take a look inside. Now, first of all, the seats, they're identical. No real difference driver's seat. You have a power driver's seat. You also have the power passenger seat with the lumbar adjustment. So that's one thing that's different. The other thing you're gonna see over here, memory seats. You're never gonna to touch those buttons. This is a big reveal. This is something that they didn't tell us. In here, memory seats, you always, okay, driver one's gonna to touch that button, driver two's gonna to touch that button. You're not gonna do that anymore in this car. Take a look in here. Here is the D-cut steering wheel, flat bottom steering wheel. Uh, you can sort of see it here. Not a whole lot uh, difference, but that D-cut steering wheel gives a little bit of a sporty look. Same wiper stocks here, automatic wipers, automatic headlights. 
Now, again, we can't turn the car fully on, so we're just going to do this. In the dash, pretty much identical to me as well. Now, one thing that is different, let me just turn the climate system off. One thing that is different in here is um, the menu options. You have a navigation option, which is right here, and you have no settings option because your settings are over here. Now, if you've seen our Celtos videos, uh, you've seen me talk about the driver modes here. Whole screen is different. Uh, let's get the battery discharge warning is telling me, hey, the engine's not running, the battery may run low, which is just a nightmare that we suffered last uh, video. We'll talk about that in a second. Missed opportunity to put the seven inch instrument cluster rather than the four inch screen. Oh, don't worry. There is an instrument cluster on the GT that is a digital display. So that's a 12 and a quarter inch display is last time I checked. So I'm pretty sure that's coming on the GT. I'll have to double check my specs, but that's what's coming on the GT. A reason to move to that more powerful car. Over here, and the Americans do not get that option. So let's point that out as well. Over here, you can see this screen now. This is new. The second I got in, I noticed it. We used to segment things in here. One, two, three sharp segments. Now you can see that navigation is still kind of active on here, but it's kind of a muted uh, active. Everything kind of blends into one. It's not the separate screen that we used to have. Um, let me just slide across. Uh, it's not the separate screen where you used to have, say, let's say the map here. And then you used to have, oops, let's just hit OK. It is dark right now because I'm in a darker room and it feels like it's dark. But we used to, let's just show you the better this way. Put something up there. There we go. We can see radio and navigation. This looks the same as what we had before. But you can see if I just have my navigation up here, I can keep that navigation and I can hit my home button here. Uh, you can have navigation and thing, they kind of blend into one. Now, remember when I said uh, that the buttons on the door, you're never going to touch these buttons? If you've seen my Celtos video, you've seen us talk about the driver modes. This is a kind of amazing thing. Oops, my Siri was out. If you hit the driver mode and you want to change the user, and I'm going to go to driver one, for, for instance, uh, I really can't show you, so I'm going to talk to you about what I'm doing right here. In the Celtos, when I hit driver one, it changes the way your screen's set up. It changes the radio presets. It brings it to however driver one wants it. In this car, holy crap, what's going on now? This is all changing to the way I had it. It's going back to the AM station or the FM station that driver one had it on. I was on satellite radio. My mirrors have tilted to where driver one wants it. My seat has repositioned itself to where driver one wants it. So you're never going to hit this button. What you're going to do is you're going to change your driver modes over here because now everything is the way you left it. Your presets are on. If you have the navigation system up, it's going to show you navigation. If you have the radio, it's going to show you the radio. It's going to show you everything you want. So let's just take a look at the mirrors. I'm going to hit the, um, hopefully it'll work for you. I'm going to hit the driver back to guest mode, which is where I was the guest. Which is that third drive mode. See those mirrors? Oh, I don't know if you can tell they're moving. Yep, they're moving a little bit. My seat is sinking. Mirrors are still moving. Everything changed in the car. And that's smart technology. They didn't do that. Of course, the Celtos doesn't have memory seats, but that's a good tie-in to the memory seats. Now, just out of curiosity, let's see what happens because I have not tried this yet. If I hit driver one, hit driver one, the mirrors change, but the seat changes, but this does not change. Now, what's interesting to me is driver one on here is a different seating position. Yep, driver one on this screen is different than driver one on that screen, on that button there. So you have two driver ones. All right, we'll have to dig into that later. Anyways, that's interesting. Coming along here, you've got identical climate control systems in both cars. Uh, I gotta move this for a second, guys, back to where I was. Changing user, uh, back to guest. There we go. As you can see, when I changed it to guest, the last time the guest had the car, which was me, uh, actually, that didn't change to where I thought it wanted either. Interesting. We'll have to play with that. But the last time I changed it to guest, the um, climate system was off. So it knew I had the climate system off. So it's going to change this system. It's going to change the mirrors in the seat. And it's going to change your climate system to where you had it. So all of your preferences in this car change. So if you always want the car warm and someone you're sharing the car with always wants it cool, you're going to end up having everything the way you want it. So pretty cool system there. All right, 25 people on, 17 people hit likes. I know there's more than 17 people. Usually we end up with these videos 100 to 150, 180 plus uh, viewers, which means I should be able to get 50 likes on this video. I want to at least try to match the likes. So if there's 25 people on, some of you, probably half of you haven't hit the like button. Do me a favor, hit that. 
All right, coming down here, this screen, one other thing I want to show you, this car has heated rear seats. Check out this smart technology. Uh, I'm going to go to the setup. Sometimes you get somebody in the car and they're just not used to it. And they're in the middle of the night, they're getting in the car, it's dark. And even though there's buttons on the rear uh, doors that tell you where the windows are, where the heated seats are, what you can do with this car, which is pretty cool, is those heated rear seats, we can set all kinds of things up, but we can go to the seat section and I can turn on my rear seat heat. I can turn it on level one, I can turn it on level two, and that's what it has. Now, this indicates in the graphic that it is heated on the bottom and the back. That would be brand new. I have not tested that in this car yet. Uh, I will leave it on for now to see if it does anything. Uh, but that is something that you can control from a button on the door in the rear seats of our car, or you can control from this screen. So when you have guests getting in the car, or even before they get in the car, you can preheat the seat as you're driving along and you don't have to reach back to those buttons on the door. Kind of a cool thing that uh, I think you can do, um, which again, something I haven't seen before. So we talk about new technologies in this car, that's what we got. Eight-speed automatic transmission, we talked about the engine, or so, well, we didn't talk about the engine, 1.6 liter turbo, 180 horsepower, 195 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it is, it's got good low range torque. The torque is available at low RPMs. Uh, it is not a rocket ship, but it is quite adequately powerful. I uh, drove it again today, thought maybe it was underpowered because I drove right out of my EV into this. My EV has significantly more power than this car. Uh, now, having driven this again, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with the power on this. Let's talk about smart cruise control here. Of course, that keeps the distance between the vehicle ahead of you and behind you. This also has highway driving assist. That means you can um, use the lane keep, lane follow assist, and uh, it can also read speed limits in certain areas and adjust to the speed limit when you're on cruise control. Um, although you're not supposed to do this, I drove several kilometers without my hands on the wheel today, uh, just because, like I said, a lot of people know of Tesla's autopilot. That autopilot is very similar to the smart cruise with lane follow assist. Um, I was able to drive many kilometers comfortable with my hands on the wheel. Of course, I was paying attention, but um, that's probably illegal. I'm going to get arrested for that. Anyway, scrolling down here, we've got electronic parking brake, same thing in both cars. And... Um, down here, what we have is drive mode, snow mode, custom mode, sport mode, normal mode, and smart mode. Smart mode is my favorite. It's a new eco mode, just so you see what I'm changing right here. Um, let me just zoom in for you for a second. I'm on smart mode right now. We can go to normal mode. We can go to sport mode, custom mode, which means you can have, for instance, sport steering and uh, normal for uh, the car. And the snow mode means it's a drive mode that works with the all-wheel drive system. Speaking of the all-wheel drive system, there it is. So that's, uh, snow mode is pretty interesting because it works with the all-wheel drive system to change the drive mode and allow the all-wheel drive system to work. You don't have to change it to snow mode for your all-wheel drive system to work great in snow, but the snow mode enhances the drive system to also work with the all-wheel drive system in snow. And one thing that people are a little confused about when I show you these uh, bar graphs here, what they can do when we're driving is they can show you the um, how much power is sent. Now, when I say 50% of the power can be sent to the rear wheels, what I'm actually saying is um, it doesn't have to be like full 50% power. What I, when you see these bar graphs, sometimes you'll see two little levels lit up on the front and two at the back. That means 50% of the power you're giving it can be in the rear wheels. So up to 50% of the power at all times can be given back there. It's a very, very good system for all weather. We have it in the Seltos. It's familiar to us. Uh, I think it's going to be excellent on this car, especially a little bit larger car like this. All-wheel drive is really nice. One other thing. Down here, a brilliant system. This is a place where your cell phone can clip in there, and as soon as it uh, fits in there, as you can see, this can come out, which it's clipped in now. Uh, now, if cell phone goes in and out. That is a wireless charge pad, which means instead of sitting flat on the dash and taking up a whole bunch of space, uh, you now slick it upright in the dash. It takes up no space. It's very close to where you're getting in and out of the car. And let's talk about wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. This car does not have it. The 8-inch screen in the lower end car does have it. So we're going to show you that in a second. Now, the catch is this car will have a software update. We'll bring it to this vehicle. You will not have it if you buy this car today. But they are going to bring wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to this big screen. Why do I want this car over the EX? I really like some of the features here. The ventilated seats are kind of nice. The highway drive assist, smart exit assist. We'll talk about that real quickly as well. Kind of a nice feature. Um, I really like the look of this car. The technology is not just a bigger screen. It is an updated software, which I really quite like. And it just kind of makes me feel like maybe a stretch of this car is kind of nice. One other little thing we're gonna look up here. Oh, the lights just turned off in the room. See if you can wave with my arm, that doesn't matter. 
On the mirror, you can see right here, there's three little buttons. Those can open your garage doors. Uh, there's still the grid in the window, which if I focus on my hand, you can see that grid on the right side of your screen. Those are tungsten elements. That means this car can defrost its entire windshield uh, without having to worry about um, scraping it. Really amazing system, works well that way. You still have the lights in here, which are the, all the lights can turn on with here, or if you just wanna touch here, again, that's in the LX as well. And again, your UVO intelligence is up here. Let me just jump out of the car. Actually, one thing I'll show you as well, safe exit assist. In the other car, we have blind spot detection, and we do in this car as well. Um, the blind spot detection can use the same technology to sense a car approaching and it will, on the other car, it will warn you not to open your rear door. On this car, it can actually lock the rear door, child lock the rear door to keep the passenger from, um, the rear seat passenger from opening the door into traffic. So that's a cool little safety feature upgrade on this car. Long story short, same engine, same transmission. I like this car better. So we'll take a look here just so you can see the comparison. Uh, we'll take your questions in a second. I know I went a little longer than I normally do. Uh, same lighting systems on both cars. So I'll show you just one of the cars. Jumping in here, what are the differences? Really, round bottom steering wheel uh, down here. Eight inch screen over here. Let's turn the car on for a second. You can see that. Uh, no multiple user modes. So that multiple user mode is a kind of a just brilliant software thing um, that I quite like that really makes it uh, a little easier to use things. So again, a little bit older system here. Now, again, this is easy. The other one might be a little harder to read, more complicated, but I think I'll understand it. The other one, this one has hard buttons here. The other one are touch uh, buttons. So they function just like the touch, touch screen. Uh, it's not like Honda where a whole bunch of functions are here. These are optional buttons, which you have in the screen. You can get them as well. It's just sort of quick presets. Um, one dial instead of two on the new uh, radio. Uh, so that's a little bit something that maybe you want to keep in mind if you're not super techie. And you don't share your car, says Jasmine. Yeah, I sometimes do. I don't currently share my car very often, but sometimes we have to. I steal my wife's EV all the time because that's really the car that we share. Anyways, that's really the difference in here. Uh, no real huge difference. The power passenger seat, I think, is quite nice with the lumbar support. And again, same thing down here. You don't have the ventilated seats, but you still have the heated steering wheel in both cars. You have the multiple drive modes in both cars. You have the smart cruise control. You don't have highway drive assist, but you still have that smart cruise lane keep, lane follow. Um, the other thing is this one, the power mirror is here. On the other car, the whole housing can fold in. On this car, they cannot. So if you want something like that, that's just the other car. They are minor updates, but I kind of just like the other one. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. So uh, let's jump across to your questions. Then we'll show you lighting. If you want to see trunk seat, rear seat space, we can do that. Uh, yeah, Albert's helping me out again. He says, smashy, smashy, the like button. Uh, that's not the language I would use, but I'm totally willing to adopt that language. If anyone wants to hit the like button, uh, do me a favor. Usually 150 to 180 people watch these videos. And I end up with 25, 30 likes. Let's see if we can break that record. I've been here five years today. And uh, it'd be pretty cool to have like, I don't know, 50 likes. I know it's not going to happen, but it's nice to ask. All right, let me just see if there's any questions here. This is the base model. So no, the blue one here is the EX, one step up from the what they call base model. Uh, the GT line is the third level. It is the highest trim level of this engine and transmission in the gray car. Um, so that's kind of why I'm showing them. They're very similar, same engine, same transmission, same wheels, except the black, gray car has black wheels. The um, blue car has gray wheels, different bumpers, front and rear, lip spoiler on the gray car. Both have panoramic sunroof, both have, um, both have uh, smart cruise control, both have collision avoidance systems. Uh, a, lot to, a lot of similarities in both. But uh, yeah, the GT line is a little sportier looking, adds a couple extra features, has that big 10 and a quarter inch screen with new, t new, um, with new, Software. Which one has a turbo? Both have turbo. 1.6 liter turbo, 180 horsepower, 195 foot pounds of torque. And all of that torque is available down low right throughout most of the rev range. So that's a really nice uh, engine in this car. All right. <laughs> I'm laughing at you guys, laughing at me. We want to have either K5 or Celtos as an anniversary present. Uh, we want you to have. Okay, if you guys want to buy me either one of these cars, I will happily drive one. So which one would I choose, Celtos or this? That's a question I will answer as well. Um, you guys know Celtos became one of my favorite Kias recently. Uh, we'll talk about that closer to the end of the video. Is there any questions I missed, guys? Feel free if my regulars want to repeat a question that maybe somebody hasn't been here. Is the memory seats only available in the GT line and GT model? Yes, that's correct. So the blue car is an EX model. It does not have the driver memory seat. It does not have the multiple driver modes in that center screen. 
And uh, so it's GT and the back. Oh, ports in the back. You know what? We definitely have to check that because I think we'll compare both cars. That's a good point. We'll get to that in a second. The ports in the back. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, is there anything else? I think that's all I got. Got the K5 in Barry. Well, you could have got it from us. Barry's not that far. Same size wheels. Not only the same size wheels, they're identical wheels. This one is black in the center. That one is gray in the center. That's literally the only difference in the wheels. Pirelli tires on both. Uh, Pirelli tires are new to us, so that's a new thing. What's the price on both? That's a great question. That's one thing I should point out. So let's just jump over here to where I have the pricing. We'll go to the models. Let me just show you on the screen right here. Pricing on all the K5s is right here. So let's just scroll up. The LX model, I don't have that car yet. Smaller wheels on that car, different uh, trim, 29595 Same engine, same transmission. The EX, which is red in your picture here, blue in our video, 32595 is the MSRP. 35 995 is the gray car. Same gray car, same color on the both cars there. Um, you can see what it adds there. The bigger screen, heated rear seats, memory driver seat, uh, heated, actually powered passenger seats as well, air-cooled front seat, safe exit assist as well. Now there is a GT. It says right here, late availability. That has a different engine. That is a different car. We will talk about that when it arrives. I'm excited to see that car. I'm going to be honest. Personally, at 41 years old with a family, this car is probably the one I would choose over the GT. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, the GT is not a better car. The GT is. It is more... more um, both do, uh, yes, let's talk about these two. Both have the same gas consumption. Absolutely. Same engine, same transmission, same fuel efficiency on both. I don't have fuel consumption for the GT. I do know it's going to have 110 more horsepower than this and even more than that, more torque. Uh, so it's going to be a powerhouse. It's a front-wheel drive only car when that car shows up. Uh, you guys asked to see ports in the back. Let's do that. Before we do that, I'm going to show you the lights on just the one car. They're the same on both. In North America, these lights are amber. Uh, they are changing depending on where I'm holding my camera. Everywhere else in the world, these lights are white. They also were white on Kia's Facebook page. Kia Canada's Facebook page. They made a mistake. Anyways, we won't say that out loud. Uh, there we go. GT is $4,000 more than the GT line. No, I don't think that's the case. Not here. Let's just double check that uh, price difference between the two. $35,995, $39,95. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is $4,000 more. So there we go. When we have that car, we'll talk about the differences between these two cars. Uh, let's check ports in the back. Let's just compare the EX because we've seen that before, and we'll show you what they have, and we'll compare if there's any differences. Now, that was the other thing I want to check. Do the seats look different? The seats looked pretty sporty to me. So let's just take a look. Um, yeah, there's the rear seats. Uh, just the two USB ports down there in this car. And we'll take a look over here. Again, keep in mind, I have not peeled the back seat. I did throw some back seat plastic back here. While we're going around here, just check out how this wraps right around. Super cool look. It doesn't show great on video. A really look, cool looking car in person. Really unique. Down here, same thing. Two USB ports down there. Oh, we left the heated seats on. Oh, okay. So, heated seats. Heated rear seats. Remember we said the icon shows heated bottom, heated back. Just a heated bottom. I can feel the bottom is nice and warm, quite warm, right up to the ends here. And I should point that out with our ventilated seats too. Ventilation is not just like the center. It's right out to the edges. The heated's just out to the edges. Seat bottom only. The back of the seat is cool to the touch. Bottom is there. So the graphic showing heated rear seats, not fully accurate. What that does mean though, is that we are consistent with um, the rest of our heated rear seats in most of our cars. The Telluride, the center row seats in the SXL, they are heated back and bottom. Rest of our cars, heated rear seats are heated bottom only. If I turn this button down here, like that and like that, rump roasters, exactly. If I turn them off, it does turn the light on and off in the rear seat here. Let me just show you that what that is as well. Right here, there is a button here. Again, all this is shipping plastic. We'll just peel it off for you real quick. Uh, right there, that light does turn on and off. So you can... Do that from the front seat and it will show to the rear seat passenger what's going on with that button right there anyways that is the gt line versus the ex i did not show you trunk space they both have smart trunk which means you can approach the rear of the vehicle without touching it without waving your feet underneath and the trunk can open we can do that three more to break daily goal oh yeah three more likes three more likes i think yeah let's get to 30 let's get to 30 uh, likes all right i think i've covered everything you guys have asked if i missed a question let me know Keys seats kept on if you see, see kept on if you seat popcorn be cooking. Oh, I don't know. Rub posters. That's what I call rear seats or heated seats, I should say. Which is faster, the Stinger or the top trim GT? Uh, hopefully the Stinger. 
that's what I'm expecting it to be. Um, the Stinger has significantly more power. It puts it down pretty good with all-wheel drive. So the Stinger will be a faster car, uh, but the GT is going to be a fun car as well. We need GT, we need GT, we need GT. Uh, trust me, uh, that's not up to us. That's up to Kia Canada. So where are we headed in the next little while? First of all, if I'm going to pitch for your subscription, I will do any video you guys want to see. Just a short one on technology? Sure. Longer ones to compare cars like this? Absolutely. Uh, if you want Kia content, I just hope I can earn your subscription. That's all I'm hoping to do, subscriptions and likes. Uh, we have the new Sorento coming soon. Kia Canada is already starting to advertise that in email campaigns. It is a fully new design. It's going to share a lot of the technology with these two cars. So it'll be interesting to throw them side by side. But these are major new launches for us. The Seltos is expected to be our number one selling vehicle next year. It has taken off. It has been incredible as a new car. The 2020 Kia Soul is a very good car as well. It's been redesigned for 2020, still around 2021. Uh, we have a lot of really, really good cars. And into the spring, we're going to have the um, new Sedona launching as well. So a lot of stuff coming up in the next six months. I'm already planning my dealership's auto show. Uh, I think we have, well, we have more YouTube subscribers than 14 automotive brands in Canada. And that doesn't even include the luxury brands that, uh, or the exotic brands that don't have YouTube channels in Canada. So we are nicely situated for a auto show uh, that is a virtual auto show in February. Uh, I think we can compete with the brands with our YouTube channel. So I'm already planning February. So hopefully I can learn, earn your subscription. Hopefully I can earn your likes. And again, we are going to throw these cars in. If you're looking for a shorter, maybe 15 minute video of this vehicle, I will plan to film that this week. Uh, ooh, this, yeah, this week will do. And that one, we already have a 15 minute shorter video. It is in our walk around section of our YouTube page. So that helpful. Will the EG, will the GT be all wheel drive in Canada? It will not. Uh, basically the GT, when it comes out with that more powerful engine, if they throw an all wheel drive on that, it actually will sap some performance. The all wheel drive system on these cars is a traction based performance for poor weather. Uh, it will, because of the weight and the extra drivetrain stuff, it will sap performance to put all wheel drive on that GT. The other thing is it will put the price point right in line with a GT or very close to a Stinger GT. The Stinger all wheel drive system is a performance based system. It's a rear wheel drive based system. It adds performance, helps with performance. Uh, this car is a traction based system. And uh, so they will not be putting the all wheel drive on that car. Um, basically I think because the Stinger is there if you want full performance, but it bridges the gap nicely between this car, brings it into the uh, GT um, line or the GT, which will have the more powerful engine and then bridge the gap from there to the Stinger. So kind of a nice step up in cars. Uh, I'm okay with them not doing it. I think this car with all wheel drive would be fun, but again, it would need a performance all wheel drive system and the system they would put on it is a traction all wheel drive system. Okay. Uh, somebody asked about fuel efficiency. Let's just show you that right now. 9.2 liters per 100 kilometers and 6.9 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, I have found with this engine on other cars, I can exceed the fuel economy numbers. That's usually with the IVT transmission. Hey, there's Chuck over there. Uh, that's usually with the IVT transmission. These ones have the eight speed transmission. So I have not done a proper fuel economy loop to see how I can do fuel efficiency wise. I would say those numbers are accurate. Uh, Kia is pretty good about that. But like I said, a lot of modern Kias, I can exceed that. Uh, I think we're going to leave it right there, guys. I'm going to see if there's any quick questions here. It is election day in the United States. If you are uh, waiting for the results, uh, make sure you go vote. That's important for you guys. And da, 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 da. for Canada, it's better to have it in all-wheel drive. Yes, all-wheel drive is good. But you know what? We won't get it in the front-wheel drive, so it is what it is. They were thinking about it, but nah. Any promotions on winter tires with car purchases? Yes, buy a, winter t buy a car from us, and you'll get deals on winter tires. We always offer that. Was the dude hiding? Te was that dude hiding Teddy? No, he wasn't hiding Teddy. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, he's our detailer. He's just walking through. He didn't realize I was online. I didn't use Teddy today. Teddy is my trunk measurement tool. I have other videos where he'll throw them in the trunk. I'm probably going to have this car in here again this week, uh, where we will talk about that. You have room at your house for us after the election? Yes. You know what? If uh, the election doesn't go your way, um, and you are willing to live under, you know, a country that has, I don't know, healthcare that takes care of everybody, then you're welcome to stay at my house, especially. Just you, Jasmine. Uh, I don't know about everybody else. Okay, there we go. I have no more political comments to make. Um, enjoy your day, everyone. And uh, we will see you again here live tomorrow.